For a Jedi to return from death and transcend the physical plane but still maintain their individuality is an incredibly difficult task, but for a Sith to do so is not only difficult but nearly impossible. Only in Star Wars Legends have Sith ever been able to return from the dead, but nonetheless some very powerful Sith Lords have, and today we will explain the Sith that achieved this and how they were able to do so. The first Sith we will discuss is Mark Aragnos, who led what many of the Sith Empire considered to be the Golden Age of the Sith. Ragnos was incredibly powerful, so powerful in fact unlike most Sith, he was not killed, but rather died simply of old age. Once Ragnos did pass, the entire Sith Empire mourned his death. But still, even on the eve of his demise, others awaited their chance to succeed him. On the day of his funeral, two Sith Lords came forward, one named Ludo Kresh and the other Naga Sadao, and began a heated duel, at which point the spirit of Ragnos appeared, shocking the two Sith. Ragnos told the Sith that they had dark times ahead of them, and that only the strongest should rule. He then disappeared. For years, the spirit of Ragnos dwelt within his tomb, his spirit chained to it. On occasion, Dark Lords would enter Ragnos' tomb, in hopes of guidance in the dark times that did in fact follow after the Sith Empire's discovery and war with the Republic. Generations later, after the Sith had seemingly died out, two Jedi who had turned on the Order named Exar Kun and Ulit Keldroma summoned Ragnos using Sith artifacts, and the powerful Sith returned, dubbing Exar Kun the Dark Lord and the returned Sith, and Keldroma his apprentice. Thousands of years later, Darth Plagueis would venture to Korriban, fascinated with the stories of Sith spirits that lived there, and enamored with how they lived on after death. After arriving, Plagueis experienced nothing, and stalked the stories up to legends. Just as Plagueis was about to enter his ship, the spirit of Ragnos appeared before him, prompting Plagueis to claim the title of Dark Lord, but to be very careful, as danger lurked in familiar places. Surprisingly though, Plagueis easily discounted Ragnos, as he believed it could have been a trick of the planet or his mind, and that Ragnos was not there at all. After hearing of this, Sidious himself would ponder if his master really had encountered the ghost of Marka Ragnos. In life, Freedonad failed as a Jedi, his ambition corrupted him, and as a student of the light, he failed to learn humility. But after becoming a student of the darkness, Nad attained great power. Nad eventually used his great skill in the dark side to conquer an entire world, filling it and its people with his hatred. Nad ruled untouched for nearly a century, until a united Jedi Order arrived and defeated Nad in life. But Freedon returned, his spirit clinging to the planet itself, but being most powerful within his tomb. In the following years, Nad attempted to corrupt the people of his planet, teaching them the ways of the darkness, as the more the dark side was used, the more powerful he became. Nad's ultimate goal was to train one of his descendants to the highest extent in the dark side of the Force, in hopes he could possess their body after they built up an extreme tolerance to dark side energies. However, Nad was eventually defeated once more by a group of Jedi, amongst them was Ulit Keldroma, who Nad warned would become a powerful Sith Lord. After defeating Nad's forces, the Jedi recovered his remains, and encased them in a new tomb on a remote moon, constructing it completely out of Mandalorian armor, as they realized his presence was too powerful to ever be destroyed, so they instead locked it away. However, he would reach out to the Jedi Exar Kun, causing him to abandon the Jedi way and seek his teachings. After successfully turning Exar, Nad again attempted to steal his body, but he underestimated the extreme power of his apprentice. In his attempt, Kun showed Nad his true gift with the dark side, killing him for a final time. Vitiate's life goal was to remain eternally, and he attempted to do so in many ways. After the defeat of Naga Sadao, Vitiate called the majority of the Sith Masters to his location, where he informed them he had discovered a ritual that could destroy the Republic. The ritual, however, was a trap, as instead of one to destroy the Republic, it was used to grant Vitiate what he believed was eternal life, and in the process, kill the Sith Masters. The Dark Lord Vitiate experienced many deaths, but always managed to pull himself away from the brink. Another method Vitiate used was imbuing his power in several bodies, known as Emperor's Voices, who would carry out his bidding while Vitiate was allowed to keep his original body safe from harm. Vitiate during this period began a plan similar to his original ritual to kill beings in order to grant him power, but this time he desired to destroy the entire galaxy and truly rule with unlimited power. Unfortunately for him though, after discovering this, Jedi and Sith united to stop the Sith Lord. Even after with the combined might of the Jedi and the Sith, they destroyed Vitiate's original body, it was revealed he was still alive, and would return after they had all perished, to once again attempt to destroy or rule the galaxy. Decades later, Vitiate kept his promise, returning in a new body as the Emperor of the Eternal Empire, Valkorion. However, again some would plot to overthrow him. This time though, Valkorion took extreme measures, and while most of his spirit was destroyed in the ensuing conflict, he successfully bound a piece of himself to another. 
After Revan returned to the light, he was attacked by an Imperial strike team who managed to seemingly kill the Jedi Master. However, after momentarily dying, Revan's consciousness was split into two parts, one light and one dark. Revan's light half ventured to the spiritual world as a force ghost, but his darker half refused to pass on. Revan's evil half attempted to finish his goal in life of killing the Sith Emperor Vitiate, but Vitiate was no longer a physical being himself, and Revan's darker half wished to bring him back to the physical realm and vanquish his spirit for a final time. Revan's darker half began to go insane with this goal, as the lives of innocence became less and less important to him. The hatred Revan held for the Sith Emperor forced his body to remain, thus a result similar to the Sith Darth Sion occurred. Over time, the returned Revan forced the hand of the Empire and the Republic as they joined forces to defeat him. After the light half of Revan intervened as well, the two yet again became one, and Revan transcended the physical realm and became a Force Ghost. In Legends continuity, following his death and betrayal at the hands of his apprentice Darth Vader, Palpatine was able to return and again wreak havoc over the galaxy. Palpatine discovered how to momentarily keep his body in the physical realm, and it was revealed Palpatine had been preparing for this for years. Palpatine's spirit, however, could not permanently remain, and thus, Palpatine required a host body, or in this case, thousands of host bodies. During his life, Palpatine had acquired thousands of clones just waiting to be possessed by his spirit. However, he ran into the same problem Freed and Nad did, that being his power in the dark side easily corrupted the bodies he possessed. While Nad attempted to train his potential hosts to hold his immense dark side power, Palpatine decided he would hop between various bodies when one became too damaged. After a final attempt to seize the galaxy, Luke, Leia, and a new Jedi Order bound together and finally killed the Sith, despite his still considerable power. As Darth Krayt ruled the One Sith for decades, his age and vast injuries eventually caught up to him. As a result of this, he hoped to find a way to live forever and heal himself. What Krayt discovered was the ability known as Dark Transfer that used the dark side to heal intense injuries. In the normal state of the power, it could not bring one back from death, but it could heal near-fatal wounds. In order to preserve himself, Krayt enlisted the aid of someone with knowledge of this ability. Unfortunately for Krayt though, once the process began, Krayt was betrayed and seemingly killed. However, it was then revealed he had survived. Just as he was found by his most trusted servant, Darth Warlock, he was betrayed a final time, as Warlock killed him using Force Lightning. Warlock then placed Krayt's body in stasis, but upon returning, discovered it was missing. Frantic, Warlock became even more paranoid when one of Krayt's most faithful followers, Darth Talon, disappeared. It was revealed although the process was not complete, Krayt had seen how to use it, and with the combination of that and rituals he had learned from the holocrons of ancient Sith, he had pulled himself back from death. After again claiming his empire and killing Warlock, Krayt was confronted by Cade Skywalker, telling him that he had plans to possess his body and live forever. Cade, though, proclaimed himself a Jedi and stabbed Krayt, but the spirit of the Dark Lord still remained and taunted Cade, telling him it was only a matter of time. Because of this, Cade decided to crash his ship, which had Krayt's body in it, into a sun, but was stopped by the Force Ghost of Luke Skywalker, who told him it was not necessary. Luke told Cade he did not have to die. Cade then threw Krayt's body into the sun, and his spirit eventually dissipated. Once Exar Kun rose to power, despite being unstoppable by any single order, because of his rampage, the entire Republic, the Jedi Order, and the Mandalorians came together to defeat Kun and his base on Yavin 4. Realizing there was no way for him to escape alive, he began frantically searching through Jedi and Sith texts alike in any hopes of returning from the grave, as he viewed his death as inevitable. After searching for quite some time, Kun finally discovered a ritual that would allow him to live on. To complete the ritual, he ordered his followers to sacrifice themselves, as it required large amounts of death to succeed. The power of the ritual was immense, as Kun's body literally disintegrated, but upon being free from his body, he discovered the Jedi had trapped him within his temple, and he could never leave. Thousands of years later, Kun would be awoken by Luke Skywalker and his new Jedi Order, reaching out to several of Luke's students. After many trials, Kun eventually turned one to the dark side, using his hatred for the remaining members of the Empire to embrace the darkness. Kun had plans to use Luke's students to form an army, and again be allowed to return through the power of his students. Luke, however, caught a hold of the plot, and with the help of his students and his family, they came together to finally vanquish the spirit of Exar Kun. So those are some Sith Lords that actually came back from the dead, and how they did it. When a Jedi or light side user returns, it's actually working with the Force, as they are still a part of it, but retain individuality. 
Sith and Darksiders, however, cannot do this and are forced to seek immortality through rituals and binding themselves to objects or even people. Unfortunately for them though, none of these are actually permanent, as no matter how hard the Sith tried, they cannot achieve immortality. So how do you feel about these Sith that returned from the grave, and which is your favorite? Also, how would you feel about bringing some of this into canon and learning that some Sith actually did learn how to return, like some of their Legends counterparts did? If you enjoyed the video and feel it deserves it, please leave a like as it helps the channel out a great deal. If you have any lore topics or questions you want answered, do not hesitate to tweet them at me at StupendousWave on Twitter or leave a comment and I will try my best to answer. Thanks again for watching, leave all your thoughts down below, may the force be with you, and have a great day.